with your host, Donnie Miller, connecting our community with information about issues and opportunities. Hey, good Sunday morning and welcome to Bridges. My name is Donnie. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Um, today we are starting a series of interviews with those folks who want to be your mayor if you are in the city of Toledo. Um, we, it is our intention to interview every single one who declares. So it, it should be an interesting couple of weeks. We're starting out with um, someone who is arguably among the most interesting and that is Councilman Joe McNamara. Thank Good morning. You for coming. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. You uh, want to be mayor, huh? I do. You do. do. Well, let's tell people a little bit about you before we get okay. started. Can we have his resume on the screen? There you go. Joe oh, wow. is a native Toledoan. Uh, he has a family history of public service. Many of you may remember his father, Dan, and mother, Jill. Actually, I was in law school with Jill. Um, he received his VA from the University of Michigan, his JD from New York University School of Law. He was elected to city council at large in 2006, re-elected in 2009. He's twice been president of that body, and this is his first run for mayor. Pretty fair? That great job yeah, on the research. Yeah, wow, I can check We're off good. half the things I was going to talk about, Donnie, but wonderful oh, job. Oh, we can thank Andrew for that, your, 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 um, your manager. He's, uh, he's really good. So let's talk about why you want to be mayor. The field is very, very crowded right. with Mike Collins just entering. Yep. Teresa Gabriel on the Republican side, not sure what she's going to do. Um, there are, what, a total of six declared people mm -hmm. now, is that mm -hmm. right? What makes you stand out from um, that group? I am driven, as Dr. King would say, by the fierce urgency of now. I feel that Toledo is on a bubble. Unemployment right now is at 9.1%. We need to be doing better. Brookings Institute listed Toledo as one of the poorest cities in the country. We know the poverty rate is growing. I think that the strong mayor form of government is a very powerful engine for policy and for doing things to invest in ourselves to grow the city and make the city better. But it only works when you have the right person using the whole office and powers and extent of the strong mayor form of government. As you mentioned, I've been on city council since 2006. I'm sort of considered the prolific legislator. I'm constantly trying to think of new ideas to grow Toledo and to make it be the best city it possibly can be, especially with dealing with unemployment. And I'd love to talk about some of the things that, that I've done yeah, let's, as a let's councilman. Talk about that because right. I think I think that while well, what you're saying is all really interesting, I think that your your um, opponents would say the same thing about sure. themselves. Sure. So I really want to know why we should look more seriously at you than look at them. So let's talk about. You can, Some specifics. you can look at my track record on council to know what I care about and the things I would do as mayor. Tell me Specifically, that. Specifically, all right, when I served as council president, I was council president twice, we passed the budget early and unanimously, and that's very important for getting things done, but it also shows an ability to work with other elected officials. A mayor cannot be successful if he cannot work with 12 members of council and get the budget passed and get things done. Specifically, I had a very good week this past week. Um, I was working for a long time on the local preference policy of the city of Toledo. I think one way we can create jobs is to invest in ourselves in giving local contractors and local businesses a slight, a slight advantage when bidding for local work. Because if local companies are hiring people, that's putting more Toledoans to work. And if you look at the, the $200 million plus project, the water treatment plant, if a lot of that work goes to local companies, we are directly doing something to lower our own unemployment rate, which, as I said, is too high. So that is one example of something that I've done to create jobs as a member of council. And uh, I've got some other examples, too. For example, I've worked with the Port Authority to create the Better Building Program. What the Better Building Program does is energy efficiency upgrades in buildings uh, that the Port Authority finances through their bonding capacity. And what it does is um, building owners' utility costs go down. It's offset by an increase in their property tax. They get uh, upgrades in their buildings, and it creates green jobs. And this program has been cited by the Department of Energy as a national example, uh, and it's created hundreds of green jobs here locally. Again, it's another example of investing in ourselves. You know, I, th I think one of the great things, though, about the way this system works, or maybe it's not such a great thing, is if, if you're the incumbent, you're still trying to do your job and you're still trying to run um, at the same time. So folks like you who are running for mayor have a little bit of advantage because you're not trying to run the city at the same time. If Mayor Bell was to say to you, look, 
Um, you're, you're saying all this stuff, but we, I have been mayor in some of the toughest times that the city has seen in a really long time. What would you do differently than I've done if well, that were Mayor Bell? A couple things. W one issue with something you said is I am a member of council. I have not stopped being a member of council. I have not stopped introducing legislation to make the but city be. being a member of council is, is a little different. Sure. Grant me that than being the mayor absolutely, of the city. Absolutely. Right. But I'm just saying I'm continuing to do the job I was elected to do and continuing to move Toledo forward. The mayor has a lot more power to set the agenda to move the city forward just because, again, the structure of the strong mayor form of government. Something that the mayor, Mayor Bell, talks a lot about is balance balancing the budget, but he didn't do it alone. He did it with the help of council, and I think the most significant aspect of what he did or what we did together to balance the budget was a change in the formula of the three-quarter percent. And I don't want to get too wonkish, but the bottom line is uh, when our income tax goes down, it's harder for us to pay for operations. So by switching to a more flexible formula of three-quarter percent, we were able to avoid police and firefighter layoffs. And that was something I tried to do as council president in 09, because when we were dealing with this huge multi-million dollar deficit, Mayor Bell came into, Mayor Finkbeiner fought me on it in 09. Mayor Bell came into office and said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. It went to the ballot in um, May of 2010 and was passed. And that is the big reason why we have a balanced budget is because we have a more flexible formula three quarter percent. And that was an idea that came from council. The second thing Mayor Bell did. But it was not an idea that Mayor Bell fought. Either. Right. No, I'm just right. saying, you, you said, what would you do? What would you do differently? Let me tell you what I'm doing now. I mean, I am into the budget, again, as, as council president, balancing it uh, unanimously and working with how the numbers um, you know, set the priority for the city, something I've been doing on, on city council. Um, in terms of what I would be doing different as mayor is my focus on economic development would be providing economic opportunities for the people who live in the city of Toledo. Okay. That has got to be well, our well, focus. Well, so put some meat on that, because everybody says that, too. And, right. You know, it's just like everybody says, I'll create I, jobs. So I don't think that they that do. Means. I don't oh, think no, they but do. but I think they do. I know they do. Well, because it is one of the things that everybody wants to hear. We're going to create we're going to um, create economic development. We're going to create jobs. I want to hear what you mean by that. Tell me what you mean. How right. will you get that done? Right. Well, I gave you a couple examples. One is local preference. The second is the Better Buildings Program. A third thing that I'd like local to do. Local preference, too, we should tell people who didn't read um, the articles around that, actually give the opportunity for local vendors first to get right. jobs right. Over, over those folks out of, uh, out a, of the city. A, a local That's company good. would get a slight uh, percentage on the bid when they would bid for mm -hmm. a particular city of Toledo project. And mm -hmm. what that percentage is depends on how local they are. So a city of Toledo business headquartered here could get a 3% advantage on a contract over 40000 a 5% yeah, advantage. Cool yeah, and again, it's recirculating the money here and investing in ourselves. Absolutely. Um, and, but I, I do think that, that the difference between me and Mayor Bell is I am more focused on creating the jobs and the economic opportunities for the people who live here. He's more focused on business and profit. That's what he talks about. If you look at local preference or the better building programs or those types of programs that create jobs for the people that live in the city, that's how you raise the median income of the population of Toledo. It has to be focused on the workforce and the people who are here. Big thing, like day one, if I get elected, is I'm going to start a search for qualified director of economic development. And you've seen a lot of turnaround in the Bell administration in the Department of Economic Development. The current deputy mayor, Paul Searing, very good guy, very accomplished attorney, but economic development is not his background. And I don't think he's been making mistakes like previous people in the Department of Economic Development have been doing, but economic development is fundamental and key. And, you know, Mayor Finkbeiner was his own economic development director, and I think that was a mistake because I think you need to find a qualified person that this is what they do. There is research and studies on the field of economic development, and the important thing in public policy is to measure results. So if you have a particular program, you need to look at what is the cost per job created. So if a program is working, you put more resources into it. If a program is not working, you try something different. Okay, you've got people out there listening to you now who want to know how you are going to change the quality of their lives. Mm -hmm. How are we bringing jobs to the city? How are we changing crime in the neighborhoods? We just did, um, um, the, the Blade just had a series of, a uh, well talked about series, I have to say. I've not seen so much discussion in the community around a series of articles right. as I've seen on that Blade series on gangs. Um, their uh, neighborhoods are deteriorating mm -hmm. at a, not just in the central city, but, but that deterioration is moving west pretty rapidly and, and east pretty rapidly. 
What are you doing? What are you proposing to change the quality of lives of people who live here? With all due respect, I think the budget's important. I'm kind of a wonk like you, though. I think I think those things are important. But you know, people yeah, it's not walking exciting down to voters, the street. Like, yeah. Not only is it not exciting, it's not relevant. They, they don't think it's relevant. Right. They th it is. All right. Trust. I know it is. Yeah. But to that guy walking down the street. They don't care. Well, they want to know about how they get more police. Right. Well, that's how you get more police. When you when you have a balanced budget and you have money to be able to hire new police classes, that's what you do. And Mayor Bell has talked about the fact that he's hired a lot of police officers, but the hirings have not kept up with retirements. We don't. We still have a historically low number of police officers on and the street. And you could you could change that. I, I think I can. And again, I think it goes back to growing the income tax uh, in, in putting more people to work. And again being consistent with the budget. But I have been a champion for neighborhoods and neighborhood development. I served as the, the committee chair for the Neighborhoods Committee on Council. I've done things like create a vacant property registry on city council so that, you know, you to try to disincentivize the foreclosure uh, aspect where banks come in, foreclose, and then don't take title and don't do anything with right. the house. And then the house deteriorates. One abandoned home on a street just ruins people's lives because Absolutely. it lowers their property values. Is there a plan for that? You know, it, it, it seems like the plan is to tear the houses down. Well, but there it, doesn't seem to be a plan, and I could just not know, yeah. but there doesn't seem to be a plan for re-energizing that neighborhood. Right. It is, uh, it's a combination. You have to, it, after a structure has reached a certain point where it's unsavable, you need to take that, that blighted structure down. And something that we've seen that is working well in terms of providing more resources for demolitions is the Lucas County Land Bank. They're also working, but they recognize the fact that you just can't tear down, tear down, tear down. You have to rebuild, you have to uh, rehabilitate where you can. So they are working on that, and that is a, you know, an important aspect of creating that fabric, that housing stock that you need to have a vibrant city in. Uh, my wife works for a community Deve development corporation, United North. Community development corporations, for people who don't know, work in low-income areas of the city to encourage development. That is something that the city partners with them with. That's very important to do housing projects and new development in our older neighborhoods to, you know, create that fabric and that sense of vibrancy. I think another thing that the city... I'm going to ask you to hold that thought. Okay. Take a breath. Okay? All right. Hold that thought and let us go away for just a second. We do. I'm sorry. I have to go away for just one second, but I promise we'll be right back.